So uh, welcome to Building a Network. Uh, my name is Merlin Fox and this is Spire Anderton. We are the tutors of the uh, Commissioning Content course with uh, the Association of Learned and Professional Society Publishers. And today we're talking about building a network. So to kick off, what do we mean by network? Well, it's the wider group of people within your community. It will consist of people at all levels in their career, from early career researchers, possibly even PhD students, who've yet to publish anything, through to regular authors for your products and other similar titles, right up to the grandfathers of the field, uh, the really senior researchers who may, who may never publish with you. But yes, it's, it's important to have people at all stages of their career, um, especially people who are going to be the key opinion leaders of the future. Getting to know um, those rising stars at the re really beginnings of their careers can be really beneficial. You can work with them and get to know them as they develop. There are some journals that have emerging investigator sections in their, in, their, in their journals, which can be a really great way of showcasing people earlier on in their careers and helping build loyalty to particular brands or, or titles. And then they will be the, 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 the regular authors of the future. Absolutely. And I, you know, I think back to my early, early parts of my career, attending a, a conference where there were sort of people there, early postdocs, just sort of starting their careers. And now I, now I see that they're heads of department and professors some 15, 16 years later. And uh, I know that they would have developed long term uh, relationships with their publishing houses, certainly for me as well, once selling a, a journal cover to a young professor who in the last five years became one of my series editors, for example. But thinking about the people who are really senior in, in their careers, while they may not write papers anymore, they know everyone and everything that's going on in the field. And they're the, they are really the people to befriend as they can introduce you to other people who may go on to be your next important authors for your title. They also tend to know about the hot areas of research and what the upcoming topics of focus will be. We really cannot underestimate how how vital it is to get to know these uh, grandfathers of the community. And actually some, some really senior people that you speak to the first few times, they dismiss you, they dismiss your title. It's, it's not something they've heard of, they don't want to publish there, they've got their regular titles. But actually if you can build up relationships with some of these people, it might take two, three years, but down the line, it's, I've seen numerous times when actually by, by working with, as, as an editor, working with those senior people, you build the trust and actually they, they do give you a go and they submit a paper that, you may, that you've commissioned. And then that can often lead to more regular submissions afterwards. So building that relationship and really getting to know the key people is really important. Absolutely. I mean, this is sort of one of the underlying things of relationships. You're building trust and it can take time. But over time, people warm to each other and thing, things can develop in terms of getting to know other people. Um, you know, I, one of my former bosses, he, he started up a journal many years ago and he said, you know, it took three years of going to conferences before people were really willing to, to work with him and publish with that journal. Yeah, I mean, that happens all the time. But you shouldn't just be focusing on the really senior people and the really junior people. I mean, it's really about everybody in the whole community. You want to try and approach the, the really star PIs and the people who are doing the hot research now to, to have a broad range of contacts throughout the whole network. But so how, how do you go around and um, go about meeting these kinds of people, Merlin? Well, there are loads of ways to, to get to know these people. Uh, conferences are obviously a fantastic way to meet a huge range of people. Um, listening to research presented at lectures is one thing, but going up to talk to a speaker or others in the audience is the way to get to know people and, and how you get known to them. Uh, you know, it's very much a two-way thing where you, you need to be recognised. Uh, people need to think about you and the publishing house as well as uh, just what they're doing. Don't be afraid to go up to someone at the end of their talk. You know, you don't have to give them the hard sell or expect a commission for them on the spot, although that does work sometimes. Um, just introduce yourself to them so that later on when you follow up with an email, you can remind them that uh, you had a quick chat after their talk or you met, met at a coffee break 
Um, it's much harder for people to ignore you when they've already met you in person. Yeah, and the, it, as well as um, the, the the people who are speaking in in the, the, the lecture sections, take a take a look at um, who's asking the questions and what kind of questions they're asking. Those people who it's worth taking note of as well, because they clearly know what they're talking about if they're asking sensible questions and are really engaged with the field. Absolutely. And of course, it's not just the talks. Thinking about coffee breaks, poster sessions and social events. These are all great ways to talk to people in a more informal setting, possibly over a drink or a cup of coffee. And you know, before you get to a conference, it's a good idea to have a hit list of people you want to talk to. But don't shy away from going off, off, uh, off script and talk, and talk to anybody. You know, anyone who's sort of got a crowd around them, you know, someone who looks like a, a mover and a shaker, go over and introduce yourself. Um, you never know, the person you're talking to while waiting for another cup of coffee uh, may, may go on to be your next hit author. Yeah, and while those personal interactions and personal meetings are amazing and really invaluable, we've seen, particularly um, during COVID times, that it's been more difficult to go to conferences, but that doesn't mean that, that you stop building your network. You don't have to meet somebody face to face. You can pick up the phone and arrange a conversation. Having video calls is can be really, really valuable. And I've done a lot of that over the years. But there are um, loads of different ways of finding contacts and finding people. Um, you can't go to every conference, even when conferences are happening. So have a look at the conferences you'd like to be at. Um, who are the speakers there? What are they talking about? You can reach out to them saying, I saw that you were speaking at X conference. Um, people who have won prizes, that, that's, that's a, a sure sign that people's research is really good. Um, people who've been awarded grants, have a look to see what big grants were awarded a couple of years earlier and follow that through because that research will be coming to fruition about Absolutely. now. Absolutely. The grants on the web databases can be very helpful, you know, really give you a, a snapshot of who, who the bigger fish are um, and when their projects are finishing as well. So, you know, when, when they're ready to publish. Yeah. Um, as, as you say, Sophia, you know, awards, prizes, you know, if there are professional societies associated with your subject area, see, see what they've been awarding. Um, you know, other ways to look into this are the like directories of experts, perhaps, um, whether you know sometimes expert witnesses, uh, public, it's all publicly available, not information. It just needs sometimes just needs a little bit more digging and can provide you with different angles on getting to see people. Uh, and as you say, you know, video calling it's very much sort of a social norm now. It was once perhaps seen as a, a bit of an oddity, but um, happens on a, a weekly, almost daily basis. I think now for us. Yeah, exactly. Um, highly cited authors, as you. Um, people who've featured in industry news there's loads of stuff that is publicly there on the web it takes a bit of trawling and don't be disconcerted if it's taking a long time to find the people that you want to contact um, it does take time um, and people will say no but that's part and parcel of of commissioning really uh, absolutely um you know the more time you spend crafting and finally tuning your search you know, the, the better the the better the return will be in the long run. You know, it will provide you with, you, you know, people still say no, but the leads you generate from better research, the ones that are willing to work with you will provide a, a better quality product in the long run. Yeah. And once you've made that initial content contact, keep it going. Keep checking in with people. If you see that somebody that you've met previously at a conference has now won an award, drop them a note to say congratulations. Just check in with people every so often, find out how their research is going. That really builds up that trusted relationship between the editor and the author. Absolutely. I've got one of my authors at the moment. He's nearly finished a second edition with us and was made FRS this summer. So I, I straight away got in touch with him when I, when I heard and he was very pleased to hear from us. And of course, you know, little things like that as well help our opportunities for your marketing team to get involved as well. So, um, any excuse to get in touch with people is always worth doing. And, you know, sometimes you may get lucky on your first meeting with someone and it results in a commissioned piece of work. Other times it may take years. 
Um, you know, there's a, there's a saying in marketing that someone needs to hear a message seven times before they commit to buying. And it can be the same with commissioning. You need to have multiple touch points with a person before they commit to writing with you. Uh, and building your network is a lifelong skill. And, you know, if you do move jobs to a new role in the same or similar field, take your network with you. Yeah, and it's really important to build your, your reputation as being a trusted expert in the field. Yes, you are the ones that know about publishing um, and really be part of the community with that knowledge in mind. Absolutely. And, you know, there are other ways of promoting your publishing house and yourself as the expert in your field through supporting events at conferences such as poster prizes uh, or, or giving presentations uh, within you know, several conferences I've been to where I've given talks about either how to get published or working in publishing as a, as a career choice for young researchers. And again, you know, this raises your profile as the expert in publishing for your field, as well as supports your publishing house and gives people a reason to take notice of you and get in touch. Yeah. So, well, good luck to you all with all your commissioning activities. Yeah.